Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbara. This is AP Physics Chapter 1, Video 8. Today's topic is the vector product of vectors. Objectives is to know the definition of a vector product to compare and contrast vector product versus scalar product, be able to determine the direction of vector product of two vectors, and be able to calculate vector product using components. The vector product of two vectors a and b are also called cross product is defined as uh, is denoted by a cross b so cross product and vector product those are means the same thing unlike scalar product a dot b the vector product is a vector quantity that means it has magnitude and a direction so here's vector a and b the angle between those two is phi how do we find a vector product Vector product has two parts. Its magnitude is magnitude of A times magnitude B times sine phi. And the other part is direction. The direction is perpendicular to the plane established by the two vectors A and B. Take a look at this example. A and B establish a plane. This plane is the same as the screen. So the cross product A cross B has a direction that's perpendicular to the screen. There are two different ways, either coming out or go in. Both are perpendicular to the screen. So which way is it? Well, it's, we have to use right-hand rule to determine that. So here's right-hand rule. To find a direction of cross product A cross B, you use your right hand. Align your forefingers with the vector A. Choose the smaller of the two possible angles between A and B, and curl the forefingers toward B. Your thumb will point in the direction of A cross B. Let's see what does that mean. You put your thumb, here's four fingers, line up with A in the same direction as A, then curl toward B because this is the smaller angle. Between A and B, the other one is bigger outside. So your thumb should point in toward A cross B. That's the direction of the uh, vector product. Now to find the direction of B cross A, you line the four fingers with vector b first then you you curl toward a so once you do that your thumb should be pointing downward so as you can see a cross b is exactly opposite of b cross a b cross a equals a negative a cross b so they are the inverse vectors this is different from the dot product because dot product is a scalar product you can change the Order does uh, order doesn't matter. Next one, let's take a look at the magnitude of vector product. So a and b, the magnitude is a times b times sine phi. That's the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the angle between them. In this equation, phi is the smaller of the two possible angles. So phi has to be bigger than zero, less than one eighty. That means sine phi is positive. So the magnitude of cross product can never be negative, unlike the scalar product. We can rearrange this equation becomes a times b sine phi. Now, what is b sine phi? b sine phi is the component of b perpendicular to a. So b sine phi is right here. That's a component b perpendicular to a. This is an important concept because we're going to use this concept a lot when we talk about later on torque. So you, I want you, if you get confused, please come back here and review what is the cross product, what is the perpendicular component mean. Take a look at the next one. If we re re rearrange this equation, and this can be written as a sine phi times b. So what is a sine phi? a sine phi is the component of a perpendicular to b, or a perpendicular times b. So it can be the length of b times the a perpendicular, so a sine phi. Vector product versus scalar product. So here vector product a cross b first, the magnitude are different. One is sine, one is cosine. The other difference is vector product has direction, scalar product has no direction. So obviously this magnitude we talked about can never be negative, but this can be negative. So when A and B are parallel to each other, 
the cross product is zero because sine zero degrees is zero, so is sine 180 also zero. Now, on the other hand, the dot, the dot product can be the maximum, uh, po most positive or most negative. If A and B are perpendicular, on the other hand, then A cross B is maximum because sine 90 is 1, that's a maximum. On the other hand, the dot, uh, the dot product is a 0 because cosine 90 equals a 0. Vector product of unit vectors. Now let's talk about parallel unit vectors. Parallel means I cross I, J cross J, K cross K. So I cross I is magnitude of I times magnitude of I times sine, the angle between them, which is zero degrees. Sine zero equals zero. So that gives you I cross I is zero, J cross J is zero, K cross K is also zero. So if vectors are anti-parallel, I cross negative I is still zero because the sine 180 is zero. Same for J cross negative J and K cross negative K. Now perpendicular unit vectors such as I, J, I, and K, or J and K. Okay, take a look at this, are perpendicular. J and I are perpendicular, I and K are perpendicular, so is J and K are perpendicular. I cross J is magnitude of I times magnitude of J times the angle between them. Angle between them is 90 degrees. So you use your right hand rule, it should give you K, the direction of K. Similarly, J cross K, use right hand rule, should give you direction of I, and K cross I should give you direction of J. Use right hand rule. Now, on the other hand, if I times J gives you K, J times I should give you a negative K. And J cross K is I, K cross J is negative I. K cross I is J, I cross K is negative J. Calculating vectors using uh, components. So here is vector A, here is vector B. When we cross them, we can use FOIL like in math. So it becomes AX, I cross BXI, AXI cross BYJ, AXI cross BZK. Similarly for AYJ and BXI, AYJ, BYJ, and so forth. So you will have all this <coughs> many terms. Now remember parallel. I cross I equals to zero. J cross J equals to zero. K cross K also equals to zero. Another thing, I cross uh, J gives you K. J cross I give you negative K. You can combine these two terms. That gives you the term in front of K. I cross K give you J. K cross I give you a negative J, so you can combine these two terms, that, that's the one gives you the terms in front of J, then the other one give you I. So if C equals A cross B, then CX would be AY times BZ minus AZ times BY. You're probably by now having a headache, there are just so many letters and so many symbols. But it's kind of like easy, CI corresponding to X. So this is all terms doesn't have x. That's the y and z term doesn't have x. And this one is corresponding to y. This is z and x term doesn't have y. Similarly, this one doesn't have z. Right? An easy way to remember it is to use determinant form. So if you have taken pre-calculus or calculus, you should be familiar with this ma the matrix for form. So here is I, J, K, I, J, K. So you line them up. How do you determine what is uh, the cross product? What is the X components of the cross product? You simply cross it out. So this way gives you a positive direction. On the other side, it gives you a negative direction. So what is I? I equals to AY times BZ minus AZ times BY. So because Going to the left is negative, going to the right is positive. What's in front of J? Look at over here, AZ times BX minus AX times BZ. And similarly for K. Let's take a look at this example. So here is a vector A and B. Vector A has a magnitude of six unit 
and is in the direction of positive x-axis. Vector B has magnitude of 4 unit and lies in the xy plane. You see this purple thing? That's a plane. So they are lining on the plane perpendicular to the horizontal kind of. Making an angle of 30 degrees between these two vectors. What is the vector product, product of A cross B? Well, A cross B equals to magnitude of A, which is 6, times magnitude of B, which is 4, times sine theta. Theta is 30 degrees. And because this is perpendicular from, from A cross B, use right-hand rule should give you K direction. So the answer is 12K. Last question. Check your understanding 1.10. Vector A has a magnitude of 2 and a vector B has a magnitude of 3. The angle phi between A and B is known to be can be either 0, 90, or 180. For each of the following situations, state what a value of the phi must be if A dot B equals to 0. Let's review. A dot B equals AB cosine phi. A is 2, B is 3, so A times B gives you 6, so it's 6 cosine phi. If A dot B equals 0, cosine phi has to be 0. That means phi has to be 90 degrees. Now A cross B equals AB sine phi, so 6 times sine phi. If A cross B equals 0, sine phi has to be 0, so that has to be 0 degrees actually or 180 degrees so remember you put it over here 180 degrees over here okay a dot b equals to 6 if a dot b equals to 6 cosine phi has to be equals to 1 so 1 is uh, cosine phi equals to 1 0 degrees a dot b equals to negative 6 that means cosine phi has to be negative 1 1 is cosine phi negative 1 180 degrees. 1 is a cross b equals to 6. Is a cross b equals to 6, the phi has to be 90 degrees. So remember, add 180 degrees right over here. I forgot. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.